Hello, Intro to Philosophy. Uh, you have your first test coming up, and this may be the only physical copy of it that there is. Um, so I'm recording this video to go over what's expected from you, uh, the structure of these tests, um, policies regarding these tests, and to go over each of the questions. So, um, a lot of what you find on the test page is uh, just boilerplate from the course syllabus. These are course policies. Um, section test, um, yeah, there will be three of these. Uh, we're ending section one now, so this is test number one. Um, they're not comprehensive, so once we are done, Socrates and Plato, we're done Socrates and Plato. Um, and uh, basically you're responsible for everything I've given you, right? The videos, the discussion forums, the quizzes, the readings, etc., etc., etc. That's all your resources. So, um, if I were doing these, um, these tests, I would space it out over a number of days. And that's just what I would do. Um, so, uh, you have until Wednesday at noon um, in order to complete these. So, just, you know, do a question a day and that sort of thing. Um, make sure to break down the questions into their various parts to make sure you are answering them completely. Um, if you are up against the deadline and realize that you are not going to make the deadline due to some sort of excusable something or other, I mean, if you're sick or something along those lines, um, it, contact me within 12 hours of the deadline, right? So, and it's, I'll work with you for an extension. I say no latest assignments will be accepted. Um, Moodle actually cuts you off. So you won't be able to submit that way. Extensions just require a conversation. That's all. Um, assignment submission, make sure your job is to get it to me and my job is to carefully consider it, read it closely and assess a grade and explain what the heck I'm doing with regard to my grade, um, like, like why you got the grade that you've got. Uh, you'll find that my comments are extensive. Uh, it does take me a little bit of time to get through. Um, it's, it's, I've got over 100 students this semester, so um, it, that's, it takes some time to read these writing intensive sort of um, assignments and give them sort of commentary. Even if you do awesome, I point out that you've done awesome and maybe try to tease something else out of it. That will help you succeed even better on the next, um, the next test. And uh, these are writing intensive and they're take home and I, I, I know the temptation, but um, I'm telling you right now, I've got a zero tolerance policy on plagiarism. And I've got sort of a wacky knack for detecting it too, so it's like a sixth sense or a spider sense or something like that. So um, don't do it, we're fine. Um, if it doesn't come from your own head, uh, throw a footnote on it. So that's, that's, that's just a way to do it. Um, in terms of reference style, I don't care, pick one. Um, I, I, I care that you reference, I don't care how you reference. So, um, MLA, APA, I like Chicago, that's just me, but um, anyhow. Um, so be sure to read through the, uh, the OU and course policies on plagiarism, and if you're nervous about um, reference styles, on the course syllabus there is a link to CiteWrite, a program through Letty Library that tells you when and how and under what circumstances you have to reference, right? So, um, readings, Plato Five Dialogues, The Apology and the Credo, and Plato Phaedrus, just up to that page 49 I had you read. Um, then the video material, there's my Socrates video, Rick Roderick, and, uh, Socrates and the Life of Inquiry, Philosophy, A Guide to Happiness, Socrates on Self-Confidence, my Plato video, Plato's Theory of the Forms, Beginner, and uh, the School of Life Philosophy Plato video. Uh, that you should have already, you should have already watched all of these in order to do the quiz. So, um, short answer questions. Um, it, there is a minimum of two paragraphs in response for each of these. I put that minimum on there because people were trying to give me responses to questions worth 5% of their final grade that were two sentences long. I don't care how beautiful those two sentences are, that's just not enough engagement with this material. You've got to engage sort of deeply with this material. And these questions typically ask you to do a few things, right? So um, I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, 
a paragraph is a bare minimum of three sentences. So if you've got two sentences, you don't have a paragraph. And it's not a paragraph, and it's not at the minimum. Um, and by sentences, I mean full sentences. Um, point form responses are far too big. I get away in these lectures with point form on the board behind me because I'm here to explain it. But when I'm reading your assignment, you're not here to explain it. So um, that will be the deal there. And um, these are five points each for a total of 20 points for a total of 20% of your final grade. So this is a substantial assignment. Um, so the questions, and you will find that there are four of them, two on Socrates and uh, two on Plato. Socrates on page 35 of the five dialogues uh, presents an argument where he compares himself to a gadfly. So that indicates what argument you're looking at. Um, there's some video material um, on my lecture with regard to this as well. You should have lots of resources. In what respect is he like a gadfly and why is this important by his argument to the city-state of Athens? The democracy in the city-state of Athens. You might expand that to be. So effectively, I am asking you to do two things there. One, unpack the metaphor, right? Socrates says he's attached to the city, right, um, as a sort of gadfly is on the back of a noble steed. In what respect is he like a gadfly? What does a gadfly do? It bites the noble steed. In what respect is Socrates biting the noble steed, chalking it to alertness? And in what sense is the city-state of Athens sluggish? Right. So um, that's the first thing, unpack the metaphor. And why is it important by his argument to the city-state of Athens? Um, it has to do with that argument um, with regard to a democracy not being able to achieve its own ends without the sort of critical rational activity, public dialogue, that Socrates is engaging in. Right. Um, so attached to that, I point out here, um, outlining the argument for democracy we discussed, and that's on the video as well. Um, how does the gadfly argument support a case for the protected rights of freedom of speech, and by extension, in our modern political context, freedom of the press? Right. Now, when I was presenting Socrates to you, I, I always present Socrates, um, the apology, as though it's a book about rights. Right. And uh, effectively uh, responding to this, you might ask yourself, uh, I mean, if Socrates is right, the charges of corrupting the youth and not believing in the gods of the state were completely beside the point, right? then what, if Socrates is right, was he really on trial for? Right? What rights were being denied to him? Right? And why is this important in the context of a demo uh, modern democracy? So you can see um, you've got a lot to engage with in each of these questions. I would break them down into their various parts. In what respect is uh, Socrates like a gadfly? Okay, step one, break down the metaphor. And why is this important to the city-state of Athens? Okay, link it to the democracy in the city-state of Athens. Outlining the argument for democracy that we discussed, okay, outline that argument. How does the gadfly argument support a case for these protected rights? Final part of your response, right? Bing, bang, bong, boom, right? So uh, make sure that what you're doing when you answer these questions is break them down into their various parts and answer them completely, right? Um, so hopefully um, that should be good and clear. Second question, you see what I'm doing here, um, I, I've given you one question on the Apology and now we're moving on to the Crito. In his fictional conversation with the laws of Athens, Socrates introduces the distinct but related notions of the social contract and of tacit consent. Step one to your response, briefly outline this argument defining each of these distinct and related notions. So you go back to the argument, right? He's got a theory of justice in which uh, we should always do the good, not return evil for evil, and keep our agreements. Well, what's a social contract? It's an agreement, right? 
between citizen and state. Right? How did he agree to the, the agreement? Oh, tacitly. Right? Outline that. Right? Second part of the question, by your analysis of this argument, what sorts of duties are implicit to democratic citizenship. Well, within the context of the argument that, that Socrates was making in the Credo, he introduces, what, three options that we have um, if we don't like the laws of the state. One, sit down, shut up, and obey them. Two, persuade the laws to do better. Three, leave. All right? If you don't think the law is just and you don't want to obey it, two, you don't want to leave, well, what's your duty then? in the context of a democracy. And it, it relatedly, um, when I introduce Socrates in this dialogue, I point out that this is something that Socrates failed to do. That's more or less why he has to sit down and take his medicine, hemlock specifically. So um, that is the Socrates portion of the exam. Now, question three, we're moving on to Plato here. Briefly discuss the constitution of the soul, and I give you a reference from page 30, what we must say about its structure. Offered by Plato at the start of Socrates' second speech. Note here that what I do not want is the argument for the immortality of the soul. Right? He moves on after that bad, bad argument for the immortality of the soul, sort of an argument for motion. He moves on to giving us a metaphor, telling us what the soul is like, where he breaks the soul down into three parts. So effectively, what I want you to do is engage right, with that tripartite notion of the soul. That's the fancy term for three parts. right? Um, so that's your, that's your first task. Tell me what the soul is like, according to Plato. Next, discuss how Plato's description of the constitution of the soul might expand what I call the moral psychology of Socrates, introduced in our discussion of the Apology. Now, it, what I'm referring to here specifically, right, it, you remember when I introduced the Socratic dicta, knowledge is virtue, those that know the good do the good, and evil arises as an involuntary error due to ignorance. Well, what Plato has done is created sort of a tension within the soul, right, where the better elements that do respond to reasons, the ones that do follow wisdom, are at odds, at least in the unharmonious sort of notion of the, the, the soul that, that, that Plato presents us with. Right? Think of the first two arguments where desire overpowers our better impulses. Right? The definition of arrows on your page 18 is a good illustration of this. Effectively, what Plato has done here is expanded what I'm calling the moral psychology in Socrates to account for how we can know the good, yet still bloody well not do it. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Right? Um, in Socrates, remember, if knowledge is virtue, those that know the good do the good, and evil arises as an involuntary error due to ignorance, effectively, none of us purposely does wrong. If we know what the right thing to do is, we automatically do it. What Plato has offered with his constitution of the soul is an explanation for how we can know what the right thing to do is, yet fail to do it. Right. So that's what I'm asking you to engage with there for question three. I like that question. Okay, finally, one of the chief elements of Plato's defense of love is that it brings us closer to a knowledge of the perfect truth of the forms. This is one of the main things that love does. This is why it's a fourth kind of madness that is, in fact, beneficial. Right. Briefly introduce Plato's theory of the forms and theory of recollection. Now, those short videos um, from uh, the, 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 the thing, um, the, the Plato's theory of the forms beginner and um, uh, thing, or the school of life on Plato video, should be good resources for you. And so um, pay special attention to those and just give me an overview. What does Plato mean by the forms? Right? And how do we come to know them? Oh, through the theory of recollection. Right? 
And then finally, the last thing you're doing in this question, how does the special character of beauty serve to justify platonic love in the context of this argument? Remember, there was something handy dandy about the idea of beauty. It's unlike wisdom or truth. It's unlike justice. Uh, beauty has a special sort of feature to it, making it one of the most powerful tools for recollection that we have. So that is more or less what I want you to engage with. Um, I've tried to be fairly straightforward. These are arguments that we looked at very closely um, as we were going through this material, um, or at least I presented them to you in terms of a close analysis when um, I was going through the material in your videos. Um, now, how are you going to be assessed on this? Remember, this is a writing intensive course. So one of the things we have to do is get better at writing about ideas. Right? So my assessment criteria sort of respond to that. All responses will be graded in terms of clarity of response. So proofread, maybe get somebody else to read your assignment for you. Right? Um, secondly, completeness. That's why it's important to break these questions down into their various parts. If I say, um, for example, in question three, um, well, wrong exam, sorry about that, in question number three, um, to, to discuss how this treatment to the constitution of the soul might expand what I call the moral psychology of Socrates introduced in the Apology. And you just give me the constitution of the soul. That's an incomplete response. Right? So you get a grade based on the portion of the response that you offered. Right? So clarity, completeness, understanding exhibited in your use of the course material. So if you say Plato claims and Plato doesn't claim, that's an issue. But if you say Plato claims and Plato does claim, that's an asset, right? And then finally, um, the strength of the argument or insight into the material at question, right? If you pick up on something in the argument that's very subtle, and frequently I have students who do this, right? That is, <laughs> that is exactly what I'm looking for. Right? So there has to be room in the grading rubric to, 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 to reward that kind of insight because a large part of philosophy is not just technical skill, it's insight. So, um, so again, um, policies. Uh, if you see that you're going to be late due to an illness in the family or something along those lines, some serious incident, life happens, that sort of thing, let me know and we'll work something out. Um, you're submitting online files, so your job is to get it to me. Make sure that your file uploaded. Make sure that the right file uploaded because, I mean, your English homework is, well, interesting, and I'll read it with great pleasure, and not a response to questions on Socrates and Plato. Um, and if you're nervous about submitting these assignments, um, email me as well. Submit to Moodle. Send me an email. It's best to be redundant. And then finally, um, plagiarism, wag, 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 don't do it. Don't do it, we won't have a problem. Okay, um, I hope this uh, video finds you well, and I look forward to reading your responses. Take care.